Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome United States Congressman and juvenile justice hero, Mr. Tony Cardenas. Thank you. Love you. Appreciate it. I'm going to walk through the life of a little boy who's now a man. A little boy who grew up in a household where they spoke more Spanish than English, which meant when he got to school, it was a little rough because they didn't tolerate that very well. Got identified by his second grade teacher to be gifted, and then got slapped in the face by his third grade teacher right in front of his peers in the middle of class. Got to middle school and was still trying to figure out who he was, very insecure. And then got to high school, and Mr. Johnson stayed after school to teach him how to read and write so he could have a chance at going to college because he had a dream of becoming an engineer. And in 12th grade, came home one day, and his mother, who couldn't read English, gave him a letter, says, Mijo, this is for you. He opened it up, said, congratulations, you've been accepted to the electrical engineering department at the University of California, Santa Barbara. And the next day, when he told Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson about cried, told his friends, told his 12th grade math teacher, and his 12th grade math teacher laughed in his face and said, you can't cut it. Don't even try it. He walked away upset, scared, went to that university. And one day, walking across campus, his friend Gloria gave him a big hug and said, you made the dean's honors list. I'm so proud of you. Not knowing what, he, what the dean's honors list was, he kind of just smiled and said, thank you. <laughs> and he went to go look for his brother who was on that campus, also an engineering student. Remember, this kid, his youngest of 11, had a lot of older brothers and sisters. And he asked his brother, what's the dean's honors list? And his brother said, as brothers would, why are you asking? Because Gloria said, I made it. He looked at the newspaper where they put the list of all the Dean's Honor students, and sure enough, his name was right there. He says, you made it. He says, yes, what is it? He says, you must have got really good grades. He says, yes, 3.5 or better. So the next opportunity he had, the next break, he went to that high school, and he went up to that 12th grade math teacher, and he said, you remember me? And he looked at him very blank. He didn't remember that kid. And he said, I used to sit right there. You told me I couldn't cut it. You told me not to try it, and these are my grades. He said, those are really good grades. He says, yes, those are mine. And I'm going to be an engineer, and you told me I couldn't do it. And that person just stared at him, blank stare. That's the day that that boy realized that there's a lot of people who love you, but at the same time, life's going to introduce you to a lot of people who are going to put you down and tell you you're no good, tell you you can't cut it, tell you you can't make it, but you can't pay attention to them. You got to hold on to the people who love you. You got to believe that there are people out there who are going to help you, who are going to feed you, who are going to help you grow. So that kid went to college, got his degree, decided not to be an engineer, came back home to that barrio, that place in Pacoima, and decided, I'm going to open up a business. And was very blessed. Met his beautiful wife, Norma. Raising four children together, started a business. Then somebody said, you know what, young man, you need to run for office. And he did. Shortly before that election was over, the Los Angeles Times said, oh, by the way, the kid from Pacoima, he's going to come in third place. Well, on election day, the kid won by 22 points and was the first person of color, <laughs> the first person of color to ever represent that community in the state legislature. And then later on, he ran for the Los Angeles City Council, represented that community. But he made sure the door was open for others. Where there were none, there are now five people of color, a state senator, a state assemblyman, two council members. And then that young boy became a United States congressman, the first congressman of color to represent that community. I'm here standing before you saying that every single person here today can be anything you want to be. You just have to learn to listen to the people who love you. And you have to learn how to walk through the people who try to hurt you and move past them and shed them away from you. 
This is a beautiful world, and every single one of us is just as beautiful as anyone else, and we deserve the best. But when we recognize that, even that little insecure boy became an insecure congressman. Yes, insecure, but not defeated, but understands that the role of the congressman is to serve others and to move past those insecurities and realize that together we will make this world a better place and that a United States congressman, yes, is powerful, but as a human being of flesh and blood, someone who's imperfect, but who has many, many people who love them. That congressman is me. I stand here, the son of immigrants, the youngest of 11 children who grew up in a barrio. For those of you who don't speak Spanish, that's barrio. <laughs> and I am changing the world. The juvenile justice system as it is today in the United States of America will change for the better. And we will start treating our little ones like they should, with love, commitment, rehabilitation, and respect. Thank you.